previously on Shea Bear 1000. <laughs> He's fighting. He don't want to go. Mm-hmm. He usually wants to go up the steps and go in. He's like not wanting. No. No. Nope. All right. Okay. You don't We're have gonna to. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Had enough? Yeah. He wants out of here. <laughs> you don't like it. Did you see something? Huh? Yeah. He he's never not wanted to go explore a room. Mm mm. Yeah. To fight him the whole way down there. Yeah. Huh. Weird. Uh, Buy you or something. Go in front of it so I don't get hurt. Come on. I don't want run. Oh my God. He won't. Just go. Uh-huh. There he goes. He's a baby. Bye, baby possum. Okay, guys, so we're back in the tent. <coughs> Excuse me, it's 77 degrees. Ugh. And it's sweltering hot in this tent. Had a fan over here, but I turned it off so it wouldn't interrupt the video. But I was going to make a couple videos, but since we're just here overnight, I'm just going to make breakfast in the morning and we're going to leave. So it wouldn't have been much of a camping video. So I'll just throw it all together. I'll edit this the best I can because, uh, you know, with that kid screaming and crying and... Uh, and the music. And the music, so I don't know how much of that I'm going to have to cut out, but there was a concert going on down the, down the street. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but anyway, man. Uh, so, when I got up to the top of the lighthouse, you know, I've been having trouble with this thing focusing all night, so please bear with you know bear with me it is what it is i'm sorry but it's never done that uh, i don't know it kind of looks like it's a little foggy right now i cleaned the lens it wasn't that that seems to be okay ish right now but i know it kept going out of focus this camera never does that even in night vision hopefully it's just my eyes we'll know on playback right mm. so anyway um so when monkey got down out and we headed up there uh after i made my loop around sorry about the wind so i turned that down the best i can for you uh so once i made my loop around and got back to where one of the tour guides was there um she said that uh that she she always wanted one person you know at least one person to to walk back down with because she's up on top and she didn't like to walk down by herself well there was two more there was another couple coming up so that was good so i was standing there cooling down because of the the air and stuff and i said you know you, you got any good stories you know and she was like yeah i said well I said, if nobody else comes comes up, I said, I'll, I'll walk down with you if you tell me some of these stories. <clears throat> I thought the guy was good, too, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, he was pretty knowledgeable about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she knew about the lighthouse, too. She didn't like it up there. But, I mean, for younger kids, you know. Um, but the, the lighthouse has a 1,000-watt light in it, which has to be replaced every two to three months. Okay. So it is a working lighthouse, and it's white with that black stripe, and it's got the red top on it. Now the next town is vice versa. It's white with a red stripe and has a black top on it. Now that's for the daytime for the mariners to know what city they're in. Now at nighttime, this one had has three lights that go in a circle. It takes 30 seconds for each light to hit again, so when you're out, you'll see a flash is what you'll see from that lighthouse when you're out on you know the water also it has to shine out at least 50 miles okay so when you see that light flash and you count you know and you see it flash again every 30 seconds so it takes there's three lights so it takes every 30 seconds you'll see a flash that's telling you 
that's telling the Mar the Mariners, you know, that they they are coming into St. Augustine. Now the other, like another lighthouse, if you only see two, it would take you know one minute or whatever to go around, or you know minute and a half to see a flash. Then you'll know. Well, I'm in this in this city, so that's how they can tell that. And and I always wondered that, and I never knew that. So I I find stuff like that very interesting. I don't know why, but I do because I've always wondered. Wait a minute. You know, a lot of lighthouses look the same. How do they know, you know, that's the town they need, you know? Well, that's how. So anyway, uh, she was she was telling me that, um, there, you know, there's some times that she ha has to go down. And see, there's no lights. There's a light up at the top. And every couple, every couple, um, well, you've seen them in the video. They got, like, lanterns, battery-powered lanterns hanging down to light the stairs because you can't just flip a light so she's got to shut the lights off and um so when she comes down by herself at night and she said this it's in a place she's had experiences in and they are strictly forbidden to make up stories any story that they tell has to be a true story or you can't tell a story so um, like when she tells her story, she said, I can't just make them up because we're not allowed to do that. It has to be true. If you don't have a, have an experience, oh well, you don't have an experience, don't make up one. So all the stories that are told there are true stories, factual stories that's really happened. And she said there's been times, a lot of times like, you know, they'll call on the radio and, and tell her that, you know, nobody else is coming up. So she got to come down by herself, shut the lights off. And she said that, you know, like the windows, they, they'll still open, but they latch. And she said she's had windows blow open for no reason. She's had those lanterns and stuff come on and off for no reason. Like one time she went to, went to go down and turn her lanterns off. They were all turned off. And uh, so you can go over and you can look down. And she was looking down to see if anybody else was coming up, you know, waiting on them to call or whatever. Cause they'll call up and say you know you got a couple more well she said she went over there one night and looked down and you know she, you could see to the bottom the lanterns were on and they called her and said okay you know there's nobody else coming up you can come down now so she closed the door and started down and it was pitch black and and both the lantern all, all the lanterns were shut off one thing it gets me though is she closed that door up on the top and locked it Okay, I, I don't I don't know about that, but and she was like, you know, maybe if you if you you know if, if it was quiet enough, she said you would probably hear stuff. But there was another couple. There were a couple flights down, a guy and a girl, but so we could hear them talking, laughing, and joking. So couldn't really hear anything. But she said that um, several times she has heard somebody following her down the steps as she would shut off the the light and i asked her you, you think it could have been an echo she said absolutely not she said i've done this enough times that it, it was not it was not an echo she had been down to pull the lantern up to shut the lantern off and she would shut it off and she would wait a second and she would actually hear steps behind her coming down so she'd take off and go down the next one and same way with going up she said one night that um that she she had come down and was talking to the, one of the other guides and they had a, they just had a small group and everybody pretty much left so she said well I'm going to go up then and I'm going to go ahead and shut everything down and she had she said she had footsteps go all follow her all the way up to the top and she got up the top closed the door and then they followed her all the way back down again and she said she could hear laughs and giggling from little kids and she could hear uh, uh like like people talking like like one night she she was up on top just waiting on more people to come up and um well nobody had had come up and um somebody called her name like right there there was nobody there nobody in the lighthouse she called down to the other to the other uh, tour guide and said, you know, did you send somebody up here? Is anyone in the lighthouse? 
and he said no we was just getting ready to call you and tell you to come on down there's there's no nobody else in there no nobody's coming up she said somebody just called my name and they said well you'll get used to it <laughs> really yeah you'll get used to it <laughs> you'll get used to it hmm. um so pretty much she said uh, every tour guide told her that yes they they've all had their name called when they've been up there by themselves so that, that was pretty interesting <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm like he got to go to the basement he saw that that yeah. was the first time bruno didn't really want to go well he he did act funny that one time we, where'd we take him and he acted strange uh, remember it was supposed to be a haunted place can't remember remember he was acting real strange yeah uh where was that i don't remember but he never acts that way Mm -mm. You know, like, he, he wants to, you put him in a building, he wants to go explore. Oh, yeah. He likes to go. He did not want to go down that basement. He no. was scared to death. And once he got down there, he wanted out. Yeah. He went back out. And, yeah, he was glad when we left. Yeah. And yeah. then he didn't want to go back. She got him to go to the steps, and then that was it. Yeah. He he didn't he didn't want to be in that place. Mm -mm. That was weird. Where was that place at? Remember, he acted real strange. Well, it was, was like it he was scared. It in was in that house place. that we went into, the haunted house here in St. Augustine. What haunted house? Remember we did the ghost tour, and we went into a house. Because we were sitting there, and he didn't like it. Mm -mm. It might have been that ghost tour that we took. Yeah. Okay, so story time here. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story, and it's a true story. It happened to me years and years and years ago. Okay, so uh, there was there was this house. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, kind of. I mean, it's probably a five-minute drive to the nearest little village. I can't even call it a town. You know, you got you got a gas station and and a bar, pretty much. That was, and there was a store there. That's pretty much it. It's called Buffalo, but. Up on this one road, you go clear up on top of this hill, one of one of the tallest hills around that area. I think it may have been the tallest. And if and there was a cliff down there, and you go down the cliff, and there's there's a highway there. So there was a house up there that my first wife's aunt owned. Well, her other aunt had lived there for a while, rented off of the other aunt, you know, and. Uh, she said there was, there was always, always something weird going on in the house. The kids would act weird, and you know, like uh, like my first wife's cousin Mickey. I guess she was uh, sitting one night, and she had a stack of books, her school books, in the middle of the floor, and she was just sitting there rocking back and forth, looking at the books, and. Uh, so, um, her mom walked in, which was my first wife's aunt, Mickey's mom, and, uh, she, she walked in and she said, Mick, what, what's going on? She said, I, I'm just sitting here by the fire. She said, what fire? She said, well, the, the fire that the Indians started for me. What? Which was, yeah, which was really strange. And this, this girl wasn't little, she's in high school, Okay. And uh, so, you know, she didn't think nothing of it. She just thought, well, maybe she's sleepwalking and whatnot. She said, well, you, you know, you, you get back into bed. And um, so next morning comes around and before school, uh, she said to her mom, Aunt Jeannie was her name. Well, Jeannie, but I called her. I always called her Aunt Jeannie, too. She was like an aunt to me, too. Nice, nice lady. Just, you know, all around good, good people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, she she said, but anyway, she said, Mom, I had the weirdest dream last night that that there was a uh, there was some Indians coming through and they let me by their campfire. And she said, Well, Mick, she said you you had your books stacked up in the middle of the floor like and sitting there and said that you know, so we don't know if she was dreaming that or what, but it was just bizarre, bizarre things like that. So. Anyhow, the house, they were the last ones that lived there, and the house became abandoned, right? So, and there was a lot of weird stuff that went on up there after the house became abandoned. Like, there was a, there was a guy living in a camper. There was a camper there on that property, and uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, the camper caught on fire and burn up. But we used to go up there all the time, you know, every weekend almost. And this place was really weird. And uh, so um, I went up there one time. Um, me and Aunt Jeannie, it was just just me and her. And because she, she actually only lived just a, probably a half a mile. This is all gravel roads from there in a trailer at this time. And she'd like to go up there, and cause she lived there a while in a house, so they, she had some memories, and, and so, and I just lived down in that town of Buffalo, so went up there, and uh, I took her up there one time. She just kind of wanted to walk through the house, hadn't been there in a while, and you know, kind of see how things change. And uh, so remember, there was a fire, you know, the 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 uh, the camper burn up. So um, I took her up there at a little four door. A little Plymouth, what the hell was that thing? I'll think of it here in a minute. And one of my little old four door cars. And pulled in the driveway, and so we're in there walking around and smelling smoke. What the hell? When, when we first went up there and walked around back, there was two quarters laying on, on the concrete step, okay? Two quarters, 50 cents. They were both heads up. I said, oh, cool, look at this, Jeannie, two quarters, you know. So I stuck them in my pocket, you know. So I kept smelling smoke. And I looked out the window. There was smoke coming out from under the hood of my car. It was on fire. So we tried to get, there. it still had an old well where you dropped the bucket down, but the bucket was gone, so it couldn't get any water. So I gave her those two quarters and told her to call the sheriff's department and the fire department. So she took off, and I'm trying to get this fire out. There, I knew if I raised the hood, that was going to be that. And the grass wasn't grass no more. It's kind of like a wheat field now. So I had to back the car out. So I got in it, and this thing's flames are coming up in. And Aunt Jeannie seen that, freaked out. She said, get the fuck out of that car. But I had to back it out because I didn't want to catch the whole damn place on fire, you know. So I backed it out. It wasn't running. It, I just coasted it backwards. And then by then, you know, there was no brakes. So I just jammed it up and parked. Plymouth Horizon, that's what it was. Kind of like a Dodge Dodge Omni. And so she got, because it dead-ended, the main road come up this way, and this forked off to the right and went up on top of the hill, and it dead-ended right there at that place. And there was a guardrail to keep you, because there used to be a road. That road used to go into another little town called Pleasant City. And, but, you know, when they cut the highway through, you know, they just put up a guardrail there. So it dead-ended there. So she got down the end of the road there, and uh, somebody picked her up because they knew her. Somebody picked her up and took her in. She called the sheriff and the fire department. It was kind of weird, like, you know, those two quarters. You know, hon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, so there's a fire, you know, call the fire department sheriff. So anyway, my car burned up up there. Well, it was a while back, or a while later. You know, we were up there again. This time it was me, my friend Mike, and, uh, and uh, my first wife. And we was in my dad's car, which turned out to end up being my brother's car. It was a 76 Mercury Cougar, 1976. That's one he actually got killed in just following that. This is like a month later, okay? But that's another story. But so we're, we're in this house, and it just seemed real weird to me that night. Like, we weren't there alone. And we went upstairs and everything, we looked around, because Mike had never been there. And, you know, looked in all the rooms, and he thought it was pretty neat and stuff. And we come back downstairs, and, you, you know, my first wife was telling us the stories about, you know, this was, you know, aunt, aunt, her aunt and uncle, Jeannie and Jim. That's their room. This was Mickey's room, you know. And, and uh, so, uh, and this is Jimmy's room. But, so, you know, so we go back downstairs, and we're just standing there in the living room talking, and all at once we heard something upstairs. I said, you guys see an animal when up there or anything? They're like, no, I didn't see nothing. I said, who's up there? And about that time, hardest footsteps I've ever heard in my life come stomping down them steps. We shagged ass, so we booked. So we went running out and jumped in the car. As soon as we opened up the doors on that car, the blower motor... And the radio came on. And we closed the door and it went out. 
Now, what the fuck? So I was afraid to start the car. It doesn't have one car burn up there. I didn't want to burn up my dad's car, you know, so. so. What the hell? So I opened up the door. And every time you open the door, the blower motor and radio would come on. I said, anyway, we got to get the hell out of here. So we left. Went into town. Like I said, about five minutes away. Went into town. Stopped. There was a Duke station there. So we stopped in there. I had to get some cold snacks. You know what I mean? A couple drinks. And uh, opened up the door go in come back out get in and mike was like did you notice something i said no what he said the blower motor and radio didn't come on and it didn't and it never did after that and only did it that night when we was up there now a couple weeks after that the house like i said no electric going to it no nothing the house mysteriously burned up there were three fires up there within three months that's weird huh hun? yeah but true story yeah that would that was really weird so I, you know i don't know if something did something to the car because aunt Jeannie was kind of you know she she could feel stuff and see things mm -hmm. and you know she always said there was something evil in the house that would always mess with her and the kids and just be bizarre behavior hmm. you know her second husband sam um he you know after her first husband died mm -hmm. she married sam and you know she said he he would do bizarre things Hmm. Not like mean to them or anything, just just weird stuff, you know. She would come out and he'd be standing out in the backyard looking into the woods. And she's like, well, Sam, what do you see? You see anything there? And he, he, he wouldn't say nothing. She would finally touch him and say, Sam, hon, what are you looking at? And he was like, I don't know. I didn't even know I was out here. Hmm. And he, she said he would just sit there, and Mickey and Jim has told me that. And uh, Jim's one I'm still in contact with on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He lives in Ohio. I call him my cousin, but he's not really my cousin. Right. But I still consider him a cousin. Mm -hmm. um, Mickey and Jim is, is, has told me about this, too. Like, Sam would just be sitting there, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, every night, just be sitting there, looking from one one corner of the room to the other corner. Hmm. Like this in the living room in that chair. And he'd do that for hours, just kind of like he was watching a bird or something fly past. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know he was doing it. Hmm. Wow. And the only time he acted like that was when they lived in that house. When they moved out of there, mm -hmm. he was fine. He did no more bizarre behavior or nothing from him. Hmm. And she, she, Aunt Jeannie would always see black shadows. And Mickey told me this, too. She said she, you know... Um, black shadows would come and visit her and she would get like what they call sleep paralysis but she couldn't move she couldn't scream or anything and this thing would just stand there and there was nothing she could do and it would get right down in her face like this hmm. like this far from her face and there's nothing she could it had no facial feature it was just a black shadow this far from her face hmm. and i asked jim if he ever had any anything happened like that. He's like, oh, no, she's crazy. She's crazy. Well, one night me and Jim was drinking, and he was like, Marty, you know, I, I got to tell you something, man. got to confess to you something, but you got to keep it between us. I'm like, sure, what? You know, I, I didn't know. Maybe he had crabs, you know, guy stuff. <laughs> he says, well, you know, when, when Mickey was telling us about the shadow, and I said, yeah, he said it happened to me many times in that house. The same thing. He said, I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. Now, they were in different rooms, mind you. Mm. He said, I felt like I couldn't breathe, but I couldn't scream for Mom. I couldn't scream for Sam. I couldn't scream for Mick. Mm -hmm. He said, it's just, I had to sit there and watch in fear for my life as this thing got closer and closer and closer. And he said, when it got about six inches away from his face, it would just, like, dissipate. Because mm. you could hear it. Mm-hmm. He, you could hear these footsteps coming in the room, and he, he would look up, and sure enough, it was coming through the doorway, moving real slow at him, and Mickey told the same fucking story. Now, he never admitted it to her, so I know, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that this story shit ain't made up, mm. you know. And then after that, I thought, well, maybe he's just bullshitting because we were drinking. After that, I asked him again. I said, was that, was that true what you told me? He said, yeah, Marty. He says Mickey's not lying to you. I've had it happen to me. He said, Mom had it happen to her. He said, I don't know about Sam. Sam said he will not talk about anything about the house. And I asked him myself if anything bizarre ever happened in that house. 
He said, oh, the only thing I'm going to tell you about the house, Morty, is stay the fuck away from it. Bad things will happen. Sure enough, I had a car burn up, you know. And yeah. It was weird, but he said, I, I have nothing to say about that house. Yeah. So he was scared of something about the house. I asked him one time, I said, you want to go up and check it out? He said, look, I moved out of there. There's no reason for me to go back there. I didn't leave anything there. I don't miss nothing there. I don't need to go back. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so that's my spooky story time. <laughs> this is this video is getting long. We still got breakfast to make. So anyway, guys, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Uh, monkey's over here. I can turn you over there a little bit, I think. Where's your face, monk? Right there, there, monkey. <laughs> that monkey monk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. So tell them bye, monk. Bye, y'all. Okay, so we're going to... I don't know. I'm going to try to get some sleep tonight. I don't know. It's not that late, but I'm sure Monkey Bruno's out. He's he's done. He's had it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's supposed to storm tonight. If we get a bad storm, I'll kick you back on. If not, we'll catch you guys in the morning. Night night, guys. Good morning, everyone. It's breakfast time. We're going to eat our breakfast, and we're going to get out of here. Cause it's supposed to rain all day. It rained all night, off and on, all night long. We didn't get any storms. But in between rain, we could hear the ocean. That was beautiful. So anyway, just make some breakfast and we'll go from there. Okay, so Bruno's getting an egg. (laughs) Broke one. How many you want? Two. Okay, guys, so we made it back home. Nothing exciting to see on the way back, right? No. No. So, anyway, that was our camping and ghost tour video. Mm Mm-hmm. What was it called? Dark of the Moon or something? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Stories were cool. But, uh, I wish we could afford to... It'd be so expensive, but I wish we could afford to uh, do it ourselves. Yeah, Buy you can. Ourselves. You can. Yeah, you can. You can pay up. But and spend the whole night there, and then that way we could go through everything. Yeah. In the lighthouse, and then not have all those people there. Yeah. <laughs> we could even do the trail by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, I don't know much about the trail, but anyway, yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Say bear the... Somebody's at the door. Hmm, I wonder who. <laughs> Say bear the Mr. Man Legend. I'm gone for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, she's out for now, y'all. Bye. And I got some cool drone footage for you, so mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. Monk will have it on hers, too, so... Cool. Very so, cool. enjoy the drone clips. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye.